Hello guys, yes, welcome back. This is ACY cast number three. Um, it's going pretty quick actually. Uh, you know, every week we're doing one, so it's really happy to, to um, have the opportunity to talk with you um, traders on the other side. Um, so yes, please subscribe to the channel already. Um, give us a tie up, thumbs up. Um, guarantee that you're gonna like the content. And uh, we have Peter again. Yeah. Thanks Peter, good. thanks for coming again here. Um, as I already mentioned, Peter was here on the first one. So you were the first, first guest we yeah. received. And after that we had Nathan, and then now we have Peter again. So if you haven't watched um, first um, ACY cast, um, go into the channel, um, go into podcast, you can click there. Peter will be there. Um, more than eight years of experience on the market. Chinese stocks are in the first uh, place. So all of the story of Peter is um, on there. Anyways, let's go for, for what's good today. Uh, thanks again. How, how are you feeling? Yeah, good. good? Quite casual. I like, yeah. like to talk about the market. Cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, um, me and Peter was just discussing about the market before we started um, recording. And we came it up on a um, sort of, a, not an answer, but in a very interesting discussion is most of the G10 pairs like Euro Dollar, USD CAD, GBP, USD, all of the major currencies, um, they have, if, if, you, if we took at the um, open of this year to now, they're very close to the open or they are a little bit movement only um, this whole year. So it is a very interesting market what, what we, we are seeing in 2023, right? Because yeah. we're already six months in and Lots of things happening, but at the same time, nothing happening. Yes, uh, we can see the price, uh, no matter what the currency pairs, mm -hmm. it just goes up and goes down and keep the same level, uh, almost the same level. Yeah. Uh, I think it is mainly because that the price is reflecting the expectation of the market, especially when there is a bank crisis uh, starting from uh, the mid of uh, March and happened again on the May, start of May. Yeah. Uh, so uh, everything has uh, changed a lot, especially in the expectation and it reflect in the price. But uh, the Federal Reserve or central every central banks, their attitude doesn't change. They always say that this year they won't reduce the interest rate. They always say they will watch the inflation goals, and they always say that the uh, uh, core inflation is keep very high level. So their attitude doesn't change. They are uh, like uh, they, they are keeping hiking rate, and um, even now there is like half traders think. Uh, the Federal Reserve of the uh, United States will reduce interest rate in this year end. But according to the dot port uh, yes, yes. For, for the interest rate, most of the uh, governors in the Federal Reserve don't think there is a hike, uh, there is a reduce. They will keep hike. Uh, yesterday, Powell uh, said there will be like 50 basis point, maybe. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, what changes is the expectation, not the real thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree with you, Peter, because I even wrote it this morning on my morning um, recap about what Paul said yesterday. Yeah. And he said, yes, we have another 50 basis point ahead. Um, he made it very clear. Yeah. Um, and the market, but, but the interesting thing is that the market is not pricing another 50 basis point. Mm. The market right now, if we look at the CM, um, CM, CME tool, uh, they're pricing 17 basis points for the next um, uh, meeting that's going to be next month, 20, 26 of July. Um, so it is a very interesting phase of market. And if, it, if they keep hiking, you know, I don't think they will cut. For sure they won't. Yeah. This would be a dramatic um, US dollar change. So the, the US dollar would be dumping. Um, I don't think they will do this. Yes. So, um, but we have we have to keep watching it. Um, but you know, we have another um, six months ahead. Mm. If if they hike another fifty basis point, we need to keep in mind that there are another four months that they will have to pause. Yeah. So if you know there are lots of opportunities for a weaker dollar, I would say in the second half of twenty twenty three. What what do you think about that? Um, I would think a stronger dollar um, because the dollar currently is like oversold. 
uh, yeah, we, yeah. I, I'm I'm talking about in like short to medium term, like mm -hmm. one month or two months. Mm -hmm. uh, we can see the uh, the year a uh, bond bond yield, mm -hmm. uh, especially like two years bond yield, is keep going up. Uh, it has already already reached like four point eight percent, which is very closer to five percent, which is at the mid at uh, the the start of March. Yep. Uh, at that time, the bank crisis happened. Yes. Right. Uh, so, uh, so there is a difference between the U.S. dollar value uh, between the the bond yield. Uh -huh. So I think currently the U.S. dollar is oversold. Uh, the reason why it is oversold, I think, is because the euro dollar is very strong. The yeah, euro is yeah, very strong. Euro Correct. is very strong. I agree. Because I, I think currently many people is thinking the uh, ECB will keep hiking yes. like 25, like 50 basis yes. points. Yes. So that's the reason why euro dollar is very, uh, euro dollar is very strong recently. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the part of the reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in like future two or three months, I think the USD will still rebounce. Yeah. Okay, so you, you may have a look a bit different for me. Um, so I think US dollar will, will get a, a bit of a weak um, scenario in the, mm. the second half now. No? Um, and you think that it will become more strong? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, especially currently, uh, like these two, uh, these one month or yeah, several yeah. weeks, mm -hmm. uh, it, I'm sure it is oversold. Um, the difference between the US dollar exchange rate and the bond yield is keeping the, the gap is yes. keeping getting Keep big. big. So I think they will just retrace. Okay. And uh, I think um, the bond yield won't go down, mm -hmm. but the euro dollar will go. Uh, the dollar uh, exchange rate will goes up. Yeah. That's my thought. Yeah. When yeah. when we had the beginning of well, not the beginning of this year because. The uptrend on the euro dollar started on um, November or September mm. last year because the gas um, 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 thing with German and all the stock of more than uh, usually they had, you know, they had like 50% usually. Um, but then German came in and bought like probably 97 of the, the reserve of the gas. Um, and then euro went up. So that, that's one reason. But then in the mid of this year, we had the bank crisis. Um, on US and then well first on Europe and then US later on and then we had um, Euro um, going out or going down and now we are on the same spot that we started that year mm. so this is a very interesting market for Euro dollar um, mm. I do believe Euro dollar can go higher um, but we need to watch basically uh, we are basically like a central bank now we, we need to be data dependent yeah. to trade yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah but in my opinion I think um, a higher euro dollar we could expect that um, and a few other institutions are saying the same thing mm. um, I would I would be very very keen to see a stronger dollar actually on the second half mm. um, would be very cool anyways so um, we had as well the s and B that's a lot of confusion for my head I couldn't understand yet if they're hawkish or if they're dovish you know the Swiss National Bank mm. um, they raised another 25 basis point. Yeah. And for me, yes, they raised, but they were raising 50. So maybe the market looking at 25 basis point hike, they may think, okay, this is a little bit dovish because they were mm. so hawkish raising 50 basis points that they come now and raise only 25. So what's your take on that if you have one? Um, like first of all, uh, when we talk about the interest rate hike, we should consider the inflation, and uh, Switzerland inflation is uh, just between two percent. I yes, think it's yes. very low level. So so now they don't have a pressure to to hike the rate. Especially uh, we should know that if we see the Europe inflation is very high because of the energy, mm -hmm. right? But Switzerland is mainly based on water energy, uh, not. Uh, not hundred percent. I think uh, I have to do some analysts like fifty to seventy percent. Mm -hmm. It's using the water energy. That's the reason why when Europe there is a Euro Europe energy crisis, the, it doesn't influence the uh, SMB's yeah. the, the policy. So currently the inflation is still very low. So they don't have to rush. And uh, and the other thing is that um, the. The, the interest decision meetings for SNB is 
is like uh, the gap is very long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like three months or four months. Mm -hmm. So we need, uh, it, it's just different from Federal Reserve. So 25 basis point increase for this uh, long gap, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a little bit dovish, but yeah. but still it's it's high. It's a hike, right? exactly. It's a hike. So that, that's uh, anyway. exactly what I was trying yeah. to figure out. I was reading the minutes, and they make really clear that they will continue further monetary tightening, further pol uh, monetary policy tightening yeah. is required. Yeah. So they will continue hiking. Yeah. I think we need to only watch one thing now. They are they are hawkish on the minutes, they're hawkish on the on the transcript, but they hike in 25 basis point, it's not showing the hawkish that they were previously. Yeah. So if they continue hiking 25, maybe the market will look at it and say, mm, like you guys were hiking 50, now 25, I don't, I don't want it anymore. So maybe we may have a weaker CHF, but then it comes and say, well, it's a safe heaven. And then everything is solved. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, that's, so, uh, so it's complicated <coughs> to talk the direction for CHF. Yeah. So now we can say that um, the market has already put some dovish expectation in the price mm -hmm. because the inflation is there, right? The yeah, yeah. inflation is low. Uh, but in the future, maybe the inflation will keep going up uh, because the, the, um, they, they, uh, the switch line is very dependent on their export. Right. Yes. Uh, and also import for some um, like mechanism, some something, something like that. <coughs> uh, so the inflation maybe keeps going up. So the CHF may goes up. Mm -hmm. But I don't think if we want to trade CHF, we we need to focus not only on this kind of the inflation exactly, but, but also on the bank crisis exactly. Yeah, uh, like it's, we said, it's, it's a bank bigger wide saver, right. Yeah. So if Another bank crisis happened, which I think is very close. The higher the bond yield, uh, the more serious of the banking um, like crisis. Mm -hmm. So okay. currently, especially the two years bond yield has already reached to much high, right? On on Swiss, you mean? Uh, no, uh, I mean the 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 United States. Oh, U.S. Yeah, okay. If there is something happening to the United States bank, so the. U.S. dollar will will just crash again. Uh, yes, again. correct. And Japanese yen and uh, a CHF will goes up. Yeah. Mm. I, you know that's interesting because um, what you're saying about the U.S. dollar goes sort of um, what I think as well. You know there are, there are lots of problems happening on U.S. that moment. Yeah. But the big thing is no one is talking about those problems. So how I feel is I see the the politicians and all of those people, you know, that, that are big on, on, the, on the central bank side, they, they, they just take and, and put under something and hide it, but they talk about uh, only a small problems, but the big problems are all hide it. Yes. So they can't talk about it. Because, because yeah, exactly, because they can't. So, yes. so that's the problem. So uh, the banking crisis is mainly happening when people are, are very fear, feels fear, yeah. fairness. So the most fairness the market can go is when the central bank or the government, government said, oh, we have a bank problem. Mm. That's the biggest problem in the market. Yeah. So as long as the, the market, uh, the, 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 the someone put deposit, mm -hmm. those people don't feel fear yeah. um, and the, the banking crisis won't happen, mm -hmm. but it will keep going up. The, the risk will keep going up. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. And, yeah. you know, for those who don't know how a bank work, it's, it's basically dependent on central bank as well and deposits. Yeah. So we need depositors to put the money into the bank so they can loan it out. Because every central bank, every bank, every commercial bank, so the bank I use, the bank you use, um, they need to keep a percentage of the deposits into um, cash. So if someone comes in and wants to withdraw the money, they have a percentage of the money to uh, withdraw. So if you give them $1,000, they can loan it out, I think, uh, around $10,000, mm. something around that. So that's the power of um, interest rates and um, all the, the bonds as well that the central bank gives to those commercial banks. Um, this is this is basically 
how we are living since you know a long long time mm. it's it's scary because you know you deposit your money there and you know that the money is not there on your bank account it's just a number you know so but anyways that's it's another another day yeah. so okay so we we may have a bank crisis coming in is Maybe. that is it yeah the risk is keep going high Okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's very good. Uh, I mean, for us, so yeah. we can trade it. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. so w any trades? Any good trades this week? Do you, do you heard it? Uh, this week or these two weeks, I'm looking to short Nasdaq. Oh, okay. Short Nasdaq 100 index. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of reason behind that. The first reason is I think in the next several weeks the USD will be uh strong. Yes, and especially the interest rate will goes up, is keeping go go going up. Mm -hmm. The expectation has rebounds, mm -hmm. so it will give pressure to all of those stock markets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Not only like um, Nasdaq, but but also Australia index, but also UK index. These these like two weeks, those indexes keep going down, despite um, the AI, uh, AI yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, pretty. Yeah, so, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah so I, I think for the global stock market, uh, no matter where, uh, it will give pressure when the USD goes up. Uh, the other thing is about the UI, uh, AI, mm -hmm. AI industry. I think it is over, overbought. It is overbought. Okay. Uh, when we say overbought, I'm not mean it will just crash. Uh, not every bubble will will crash. It may, uh, it may be the is in industry is does very good. So the bubble is keeping getting small. The, that's that's one thing. Uh, another thing is the bubble will will just crash. I don't yes. think so, but we need to know. We have get to the year mid of the year, uh, yeah. end of the month. Exactly. A lot of like Wall Street, um, uh, the financial companies, they will do their rebalance. Yes. Uh, uh, let Let's just make an example like uh, the ARKK Wood, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so. They, the the biggest holding is Tesla, mm -hmm. uh, like the Tesla has the the stock price of Tesla has raised eighty percent in just two months time, and Wood is really like this 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 trend right? Yep yep. But when the Tesla price goes up, she is keeps selling it, mm -hmm. uh, because it has the the investment policy in his. His uh, index, his ETF has a has a policy yep, that yep. if if some um, stock the percentage is over ten percent, uh, she need to keep it low back to ten percent. Okay. That's rebalance, right? Yes. So for most of the uh, financial institution, they need to do their rebalance, especially when the year end, uh, when, when the half year end, when the season end. So especially when the stock market is keeps going high, the percentage in their portfolio has has just go over their their policy. Mm, they need okay. to do the rebalance. Right. I'm not saying uh, that they want to short it. I'm saying they when they do the rebalance, it will give pressure to to those stocks, especially well, what the uh, the if the stock. Um, just rise a lot, they will have a high possibility to to like sell it to do the rebalance. Okay. Yeah. So that's the main reason I will short Nasdaq in the next two or uh, one or two two weeks. Okay. Yeah. So a sort of a little bit of a swing trade. Uh, to yes. To carry to yes. carry for maybe two weeks. Yes. Um, maybe not only. For two weeks, uh, because I think there is there is a little bit overbought, uh -huh. and the USD is strong. So combined, like rebalance, USD mm. and overbought. So these combined, I think I will short Nasdaq for like three or four months. Wow. Uh, sorry, three uh, or weeks. four weeks. Okay, yeah. okay, so um, a month. Okay. Especially I have I have some um, holdings for just Nasdaq mm -hmm. index. So I want to short it to do a hedge. Uh, right, that's right. that's the main reason why I want to short it in in current market. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's uh well now I have uh, two questions. Yeah. Um, first one is we are having this huge, huge. I don't know if it's a bubble, 
but would be very dangerous if it's a bubble, the EA and yeah. AI, you know, all of those robots, let's say. I think it must have a bubble because the... Do you price... think it will, really will, will become something about that? Because look, I was on Instagram this week, you know, and I even sent it to my dad. Um, the guy had a camera, yep. right? The camera didn't have any, any... So the camera was probably like the size of this phone and uh, it didn't have uh, actually a camera. It yep. didn't have a camera. So it was only all black here and it have sensors, right? So it could feel what was, you know, going on and what was the temperature, if it was day, if it was night, and then it would write a sort of a little story on, on the back of the screen. Yeah. So to, let's say here, I put the camera here and wait for one minute or so. So the camera would say, oh, there is a camera um, pointing to, to me. There is someone on my left side there is a cup of tea and there is someone on the back. So it would write, and then maybe 20 degrees and it's sunny outside. Yeah. Man, it would generate an image with an AI. Yeah. And it would be exactly the same if you look at it. Yeah. But there's no camera. It was only an AI receiving the information and printing an image. That's so cool, but that looks dangerous as well. <laughs> yeah. But let's let's just one uh, ask one question. Does yeah. this product will let this year's financial year report the income rise like forty or fifty percent? I don't think so. No. Right. Yeah. So it is keep. Uh, it is a long term thing. So yeah, when we yeah. talk about bubble, uh, it's the difference between the price and the value. I think the value, yes, of course, the value is going, yeah, going up yeah, okay. and uh, it's accelerating. Yes, of yes. course. But uh, the price change, like two months, 80 percent price ch change for, for this big company, uh, it's uh, uh, it, it, it is all uh, it is. I, I think it is price. The price increase is much more over the value increase. So there is a difference, uh -huh. but it doesn't mean the bubble will crash. When we talk a bubble, uh, it doesn't mean always the bubble will crash. So it's sometimes the value will keep going up, going up. and just uh, like uh, get, like get, to, get the to the price. price. Yeah. It is a good thing. Yes. The other thing is that the price will go down. Mm -hmm. Or the, the third thing is that they will just uh, come, uh, mm -hmm. come and, and retrace to, to the same level. Yeah, yeah. So a bubble doesn't mean it will always crash. Uh, mm -hmm. It means it is overbought. Yes. So when there is an overbought, we think it needs time for the price to uh, to to Get to side side with, sideway yeah. or like to retrace a little bit. Yes, uh, it doesn't mean the price will keeps going going down going or crashing. Down. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, in long term, yeah. I think the price will keep going up. But in recent, especially in this time. Uh, the industry will need to do the rebalance. Mm -hmm. So now, just now, I, I will short NASDAQ or I will hedge the NASDAQ, in the risk of NASDAQ. Okay, that's cool. That's what I say. So that's, that's very good. Thanks for that. And then the second question would be hedging positions because we talked yeah. about that on the first episode. A few, um, few followers came in and said, what is hedge? You know, how can I hedge a position? If I buy US dollar, USD JPY and sell GBP USD, am I hedging something? Mm. Um, there are so many different ways you can hedge. And, you know, me and Peter, we were discussing, I think a month ago, something about hedging uh, rental, you know, yeah. because yeah. I think one of the clients had a um, investment on uh, a restaurant, wasn't it? Yes. So he was renting the place. Um, and then the rental in Sydney is, as we mentioned on the first episode with Peter, it's going crazy. Um, and, and he would like to, to hedge in some way the rental price. Yeah. So then we discover that there's no actually easy way to, to hedge a rental. So anyways, that's, uh, that's some um, things we can't talk here. But um, what is hedge? What, what, how can someone, a retail client, hedge a position? So uh, the hedges means you need to reduce the, the exposure to some specific risk what you are uh, what has exposed for for your current portfolio. Mm -hmm. So for me, just just my experience, I have bought 
uh, Microsoft and Navida uh, from from March. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, they are going up quite a lot, but I don't want to sell them. Right, I, I think in long term their stock price will keep going up and they will give a lot of dividend. Yes, mm -hmm. the, so I want to hold them. But in short term, I think there will, will be a rebalance and there will have a downside risk for the entire uh, like IT industry. So now I have a exposure to that risk. Mm -hmm. I want to reduce the, the exposure. So I, I will sell NASDAQ to uh to 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 reduce the risk reduce so the risk. now uh, i'm i'm holding microsoft and i'm selling nasdaq mm -hmm. so when the nasdaq is going up my microsoft will go will go the Good. price will go up yep. i will gain money but my short will will lose money mm -hmm. but at the same uh uh, just reverse. If the market is going down, my Nasdaq will win money, yes, but yes. my Microsoft will, will lose, lose money. Yes. So that is hedging. Uh, I have limit my risk exposure to the market change, especially Correct. for the rebalance yeah. Uh, environment. Yeah. yeah. When when I started to trade for the fund, the first thing they taught me was that always hedge your position. Yeah. Because you need to diversify your risk, mm. not only your portfolio. Yeah, the risk has to be diversified as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially there is another advantage is uh, when you short NASDAQ uh, or I used to short Dow Jones mm -hmm. uh, in, in CFD, mm -hmm. you can gain swap fee. Yeah, every exactly. Day. So yeah, the swap that's fee is yeah, exactly. an uh, advantage. Another yeah. thing, yeah. So, um, but it's, it is very hard for actually, there are some, some ways you can do that, but it's 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 a bit more complicated to hedge on Forex. Yeah. It is a bit more complicated to hedge on CFD because mm -hmm. you have so much costs involved when hedging a CFD. So you may have um, the swaps, yeah. the commission, the spreads, and all of the other costs involved. So there are even some brokers that they charge you to, um, to, to deposit and withdraw. So if you're losing money, you're going to lose even more to withdraw the, the rest of us you have. Well, fortunately, we don't do this on ICY, so <laughs> <laughs> there we go, right? Yes. Um, but anyway, so how could someone hedge a position on Forex? Would they go to indexes? Would they go to um, shorting one pair and longing another pair? How, how could someone do that? Uh, let, uh, let me just give an example. Like I have, um, there is one of my friend. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, she want to buy uh, 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 a property in yep. Singapore uh, and now in, in like four months time so she has a requirement to uh, do the exchange from AUD to Singapore yuan, uh, Singapore dollar. Yep. Yes. Uh, so my recommendation is that she can short AUD USD because Singapore yuan is very related or anchored to mm -hmm. USD. Mm -hmm. So what, what her fear is that if the AUD, uh, the value goes down, the exchange rate goes down, she won't be able to exchange that money, that much money mm -hmm. uh, for, for Singapore to mm -hmm. purchase the property. So the, the most important thing is to hedge that risk in like this four months period. Yep, yep. So she definitely can sell AUD USD. So if the AOD USD is, is going down, she will make money uh, in the CFD, but she will lose money when, when she do the real exchange. So that's hedging. Uh, so when mm. she has the gain, she has the loss, and the interest rate, uh, the, the currency change doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So um, just, just a yeah, re reverse is also the same. Also the same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. same thing. Yeah. Okay, so now you, have, now you know how to hedge a position on Forex, on even, even on real life. Everything is hedgeable. Yes. Not <laughs> Every, everything. Well, uh, uh, last time I do some analysts to, to say if we can hedge labor. Labor? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, and I mm. test a lot of things I, and I don't think I don't anything, think so. anything I think Because it's I something, you, yeah. And, and I, I give my clients an advice. If you want to hedge the, the labor, labor cost, just drive Uber exactly. at night. Yeah, that's the only only thing only you can way. do. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah. All right. Ne uh, next, I want to talk a little bit about what's gonna um, what what is on on your watch list. Let's say yeah. for the next week uh, because it's gonna be end of month. 
So what are you expecting? Um, before that, uh, before I forget, uh, we're going to have PMIs coming from US tonight. Yeah. Right. We're going to have services PMI. Yeah coming from um, US and we all know that this has um, a big take, right? So we can have a look this morning, the market, um, especially US dollar, it's it's not moving much. Mm -hmm. I know it's Asian session, um, but we can go for London. It won't move too much because they want to get the data so then they can position themselves. Yeah. So w what's your take on that? Do you think something, because manufacturing PMI, it, it, it is, it's, it's not the best it's not the best. So yeah. I think services PMI can come can come negative as well. Uh, I don't uh, uh, I think it doesn't matter. The only matter is, is the the real data compares to the expected data. Yeah, correct. So if it, the real data is high, the currency may go goes up. Uh, but I have a very simple theory or or how to trade just tonight, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So the higher uh, compared to the expected value, okay. The higher the US service PMI goes, the better the USD. And yeah. the lower the Europe uh, P, uh, the, the Europe manufacturing PMI goes, also the higher USD. Mm. Because it will let the Euro goes down and yeah. will keep the USD goes up. Mm. So when the USD goes up, everything will drop. Like, it's a, it's a very simple thing, but uh, it may, uh, it makes sense in the current market. Yeah, when yeah, USD does. goes up, everything goes down, especially for commodities. Uh, we are talking about copper. Uh, we are talking about the the crude oil, yep. also the gold, gold. the silver. Yep. And also, it may influence the stock market, especially for AU, AU index, UK index. Maybe it may not give... A, enough pressure to the NASDAQ because AI stock yesterday is still very strong, mm -hmm. uh, but it will definitely give pressure to it. Mm -hmm. It may not rise a lot or it will just crash a little bit. Yeah, but for UK index, for Europe index, for uh, Australia index, it will give a little pressure. There. Okay, that's, that's good to know, yeah. that's good to know. All right, move to um, think one of the last questions. So yeah. what do you have in mind to trade into the next week um, or so? Uh, any any trades on, on, online? Yeah, the central of my theory is to buy USD. Okay. And when I buy USD, I will sort everything. At the, right. the, the, the same... Uh, even, even Euro dollar? Yes, even. Of course Euro dollar. Because, because USD yeah. index is uh, mainly mainly influenced yeah, by euro yeah. dollar, right? I, I, yeah. have a, I have a huge take on uh, upside moves on euro really? dollar. Yeah. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> All right, guys, it's stay tuned for that. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, go ahead. So, um, looking to buy euro, uh, um, US dollars? US dollars. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, and sell pound? Uh, yes, yeah, sell everything, especially sell AUD. Yeah. AUD, of course. Yes, AUD, AUD is it's very weak. We're recently. very weak. But uh, like yesterday, uh, at like at the middle of the day, mm -hmm. uh, the AUD just Had a, just uh, yeah. just goes up a little yeah, bit. So it is because I think uh, they pub ABS like published the uh, uh, the the wage wage data, which is very high, especially for material and. Uh, energy sector, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. wage increase is super high. Yeah. So that's the reason some some people may think uh, the Australia will keep hiking. Uh, so the Australian dollar goes yeah. up a little bit. Yeah. But the the like medium term trend is based on USD, not AUD, no, right? Yep, yep. So it, AUD is influenced by USD, not USD influenced by AUD. Mm -hmm. So I, I think AUD is still weak right now. Yeah, so oh, yeah, I, will, it's very weak. I will short it's very AOD weak. USD yeah. in the near like one or two weeks. Yeah, yeah, I even have a long position on GBP AUD. Yeah. I still long on GBP AUD and um, short on AUD CHF. Yeah. I know they are sounding a bit dovish, but I had the trade tests, so I'm following this. As well, um, yesterday I had a day trade on AUD CAD. Short. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had a short position on AUD CAD. Mm -hmm. um, very nice position. It gave me nearly 
2.83%. Wow. So it was pretty good, very good risk reward there. And what else I have? Um, yeah, I think that would be my portfolio at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, traders but, should know another thing. When I say that I'm uh, looking to buy a, a USD, yeah. there is another very big risk is the bank crisis. If the bank crisis in, uh, happened again in United States, the USD will just crashed. Crashed. Yeah. So don't don't even mind like buy USD. When it's crashed, it will keep crashing. Yeah. So it at is, that time, yeah. I will buy U. Sorry, I will sell USD JPY and sell USD CHF. Oh uh, yeah, I yeah. think I think not only you has uh, this perspective of it may happen and it may happen soon. Yeah. I was uh, reading some um, institution reports. You know, I think um, HSBC. Um, especially JP Morgan, especially as well um, Goldman Sachs yeah. and Mufji. Uh, who else? Um, yeah, that would be the fourth biggest one they are talking about. It may happen again. Yes, especially uh, we recently see a news that the SVB, uh, the, 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 the overseas sector of, of SVB, which is the first uh, bank w which is bankrupt yep, yep. SVB right yes so the overseas sector doesn't protect its deposit for for those for those, for those clients, clients. Yep. yes mm. so there may be raise up uh, another fear and it will inf um, finally just comes to a banking crisis yeah so everything is happening but the but risk is there exactly yeah. so that's the exactly point like Everything is happening, so the SVB still don't secure yet. Yes, you know we have COVID yet; it is influencing the market. Mm. We have Ukraine war yet. Yes, yes. we do have it, yes. and it is influencing and it is the market. More serious than, and it's yeah. more serious now than 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 before. Yeah. Um, you know, and what are they doing? Is they're only taking and hiding. They're, it's here; no one can see. Let's talk about good things now. Nice, mm. but everything is happening, and no one is seeing it. And once this comes to the media again, forget about that. Yes. Everything will be like massive drops and bombs. Yeah, it's going to be pretty hard. Like most of the people won't talk about it because they are um, like benefit related. Uh, yes, correct. Right? Uh, the only thing who will talk about is is the those hedge fund yeah, because yeah. they can sell, they can buy. Yeah, they do. Uh, they, they don't want. don't don't, <laughs> don't matter. Care. Yeah, <laughs> especially for for us analysts, we don't care. Yeah, about we don't care. The market, <laughs> no. if it is going up, going down, it, it, we don't care. No. We only what we only care is the truth, mm. right? Yeah. And we know we know yeah. the truth. Yes. Anyways, and we care as well for your like and your subscription. You like that, right, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, um, there is it. Uh, we come to an end of another podcast. Thanks, Peter, again to Thank have you here. Very much. Um, please comment below if you have any questions for Peter. Um, all the comments I've mentioned to him that you guys like it. So thanks again, and um, I see you into the next uh, podcast. See you. See you.